Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scottsy Business, and today we're going to be talking about Hive, the Hive ecosystem, all the things that go into Hive. We're going to go through the sign up process. We're going to take a look at the second layer solutions on Hive, all the good stuff. A lot of it is very confusing if I just talk about it, so I'm just going to screen share and just jump right into it and show you guys because there's a lot to get through, but I promise it'll all be worth it. So, starting off, uh, you go to signup.hive.io, or if you had previously already had an account back on Steam way back in the day, you can use those same keys to get access to Hive. If you've already used Steam, you already know how to use Hive, just use the same login. You'll have a duplicate of all of your Steam power and your liquid Steam and your Steam back dollars, all in the form of Hive, Hive back dollars, Hive power. That being said, for people who are just getting started though, let's take a look. So signup.hive.io, you start there, you've got all these different options. Um, it really doesn't matter what you do. Obviously people prefer the free stuff, um, but you might not wanna verify because these are, or rather Hive is very decentralized. The only reason that there's any kind of verification is to prove who you are so they're not giving away free Hive because the way that Hive works is you've got your your Hive power, which is what allows you to make interactions and do different things on the Hive blockchain. So they're not just giving these accounts to anyone for free. Uh, all the ones that cost something don't really, you're not really paying for it, you're actually depositing funds into your own account. So the money that you would spend if you decided to isn't being spent, so to speak. It's being invested or deposited rather into your account. You still own the money that you're putting in. Um, so don't be deceived by that. It's more so if you're really impatient and you just want to be signed up immediately, you can pay quote unquote, to have your account set up immediately. However, 3Speak apparently has no verifications whatsoever. It's instantaneous and it's free. And 3Speak is my favorite um, application to use for video because it's absolutely the best decentralized video application that is on the Hive network. And as you'll see, as we get into it, there's all these different interfaces built, but they all access the same backend. I kind of look at Hive like it is um, a, a second alternative, or it's just like an alternative to the internet, so to speak. And you have all these things being built on top of it. It's kind of like web 3.0, if you want to, um, you know, akin it to something. Okay. Well, that's, that's not good. Uh, Okay, so we're not going to do that one. Let's just say we want to instantly sign up. So we're just going to use SNC so we can verify by email. But if you wanted to do this without having to verify, you're very against KYC, you're 100% decentralized, you can pay a tiny fee, but you know, teach their own, right? Um, this also varies apparently with verification. I'm not really sure exactly what that means, but most people don't want to wait. So let's go through SNC and see how this process, uh, how it is and how long it takes, right? So Scott C test and just use the email that I use for everything. Because right now my Steam or my original Steam creation was with no email or anything connected, completely no verification whatsoever. And then when I signed up on Hive, um, I had the duplicate version of that from my Steam account. Um, but again, for most people getting started, they will be just signing up completely brand new. All right, now that I've got my email confirmed, I've got my password and everything, they give you your master password to access this and then you can obviously change that, but uh, we'll get into all that in a little bit. So first we'll go through hive.blog and then I'll actually share some of the interfaces that I typically use, but this is kind of like the raw interface that will show you everything with little to no filters on the platform. So you'll go to login. This is my normal account, but let's use my new test account here. Normally you should be using a 
posting key to log in, but right now we just have our master key. So you can download a PDF with all the keys and instructions. Uh, we're just going to take a look at our wallet. So in your wallet, your Hive wallet, you've got your various keys and they show you right here what they're all for. The whole reason as to why you have multiple keys or, you know, like passwords, quote unquote, it's a little confusing, but essentially the reason that we have this is so that you don't have to give full access to any interface or platform that you are using to access Hive. So essentially they recommend that you just log in with your posting key because that way no one can access your money or reset your account or anything like that. If you were to accidentally, you know, use this key somewhere, the most that they could really do is just interact um, in the social aspect, like upvoting people, commenting, posting posts, but they can't access your funds or, you know, the administrative parts of the account because you control everything. There is no, you know, recover password. There's no support team to help you or anything like that. This is about as decentralized as you can possibly get. And, um, I will be making another video to show exactly how decentralized Hive and Steam are because there was instances where six people have been banned off of the platform, but you can still see everything that they've ever posted. Uh, in that sense, it's like censorship resistant, but it's not censorship free to a hundred percent degree, right? They can freeze these accounts because it was illegal, uh, the things that they were doing and all of the witnesses agreed, but you can still see everything that they did to be completely transparent. And again, we will get into that in another episode because this will be ridiculously long. So to reveal your keys, you do need your master password again. And now you can see all of your keys. So if this were obviously like if this was my real account, I would never be showing this and you should never show anyone this. Um, and if someone for some reason did see these keys, you should reset your keys. Regardless though, all we need is our posting key to be able to just log in normally because they do not want you using uh, your master key because it's just, it's really unideal. It's just, it's bad practice and they want you to get used to using the correct keys to log in. So now that we finally got our account, this is your account here. You can click profile brings you to your profile. This is the account. Uh, you can see it was created 10 minutes ago. You've got all of your stuff here. Your wallet has, um, you start off with 0 0.0001 or 001 Hive. You need Hive in your account to be able to perform actions. So ideally, I mean, first off, you should probably start just by powering up so that you can do something. Ah, yes. So to actually power up though, you need your active key, not your posting key. And it says right here, when you go to do this, this can be a little tedious jumping back and forth using various keys. That's why some people prefer to just use hive signer and it kind of just covers everything. But for now, we're just going to do it like this so that you can really see the in depth you know, full account of everything on the platform. If you were going to use Hive Signer though, all it is is just you're adding your master key and then you're making up a password to log in and use that. Just a simple password that you would normally use to make it a little more simplified. Uh, but you do want to have all of your keys somewhere protected, hidden, uh, just so you have that access. But again, this dictates what you can do on the platform. It's sort of like your bandwidth, how much resource credits you can actually use. It's like you can't just go around spamming the network, upvoting everything, commenting on everything because you have to have some stake in the network. They give you a tiny amount to start off. And with this, you can do just the basics. Like you probably want to start off by doing like an introduction post and then hopefully get some hive there. Or ideally you might just buy like one, two, three hive, 
Um, you could ask someone to delegate you a little bit. My friend recently started on Hive and I just delegated him five Hive so that he can, you know, get around, get started. And now that he's earning Hive uh, a decent amount already, I believe he's already got more than five Hive. I can undelegate that so that um, I'm not actually giving it to him, but I'm lending it to him or rather he's borrowing it just so that he can kind of get started. And uh, delegation is right here. Once you have more hive power, you can delegate to other people, allowing them to use your hive power for up to seven days. And it takes seven days to undelegate. It's just a nice nifty little way for um, people to be able to still use the system without having to dedicate any resources to this. Because I know most of you want to use this 100% free. So again, hive power is what you need to be able to you know, make any kind of interactions activity on the system. It also increases your, um, your rewards that you get for upvoting other people's posts that end up doing really well. You get a portion of the rewards for curation. So the main ways that you can earn on steam or rather hive now are through curation, through holding your hive power and earning 3.45%, uh, APR per year which is subject to change. Um, but that's still, you know, decent, just holding it there. And then what you can go and do from there is it also increases the amount of upvote that you can give other people with your hive. So it's going to make a little bit more sense when I show you from my actual account, because I have some hive to actually show you all this stuff. But we'll first just do the basic setup before we get into that. So in your um, blog settings, so we go blog and then settings. This is where you can actually set everything up, right? So this is what this looks like. You can go set up, add your name. You can upload, you know, images and, you know, get your profile picture set up and all that good stuff. Ideally, you want to use... Uh, a very low, um, a very small size picture so that it doesn't use up a lot of bandwidth. So here we go. I'm updating now. And when I refresh this, I should have a picture and a display name. Maybe I have to uh, do a, a hard refresh. Ah, okay, there we go. Yeah, so that looks good. And um, yeah, so essentially a lot of your basic stuff will be set up here in the uh, blog and then settings. Don't be confused by going into wallet and then hitting settings. It's in your main section here. Um, but now let's go over to peak D because this is where I actually typically use hive. Again, it is very, very similar, but it's just got a little bit more to it and it's a little easier to use. So I'm going to switch to my main account now just to, make this a little easier for you guys to follow along with because I've actually got, you know, I've already got some content set up. I'm using Hive Signer to log in right now, but I've already got, you know, my content set up and a bunch of different things. So again, this is what we've got here. Oops. There we go. So this is my account. I posted this almost 24 hours ago. This was a video that I posted on three speak, which uh, you can then watch anywhere on the platform. Because again, the way that this works is hive is kind of like a layer on the internet and all the different platforms and interfaces that are built all interact with the same thing. They can add filters and such, but it's all the same stuff, right? So even though this was posted on three speak, you can still view it just the same on uh, peak D or on hive dot blog. So if we go ahead and click on this, this is what this looks like in a blog format here on peak D, right? But if we were to look at it on three speak, which is where I uploaded it, it looks a little bit more like a YouTube. 
So three speak cannot see regular blogs. Three speak can only see videos uploaded on three speak. Again, it's still all the same platform. And uh, you know, if you get an upvote on three speak, it's the same. You'll get the rewards no matter where you go. Um, same wallet everywhere you go. Just on here, the main difference is that the main difference is that um, it's like a YouTube alternative. So the only things that you'll see on here are videos. It's really just filters being added so that all you're seeing are videos on the platform. And again, you can see it's very, very similar here. Um, I'm not sure what this paid subscription thing is, but you can just follow anyone normally. You can also download their videos, give them an upvote, a like, um, reply. You can reblog it by posting it to your account. And then you can see how much I earned on this video. And here is the community that I posted to. Communities are like another layer on the blockchain where you can earn um, specific tokens akin to those communities on top of the hive that you're already receiving. So I use Leo finance pretty much exclusively. Okay. Well, that's a bad example. Let's just go to leofinance.com or dot IO. This is just another interface on a uh, hive. So again, everything that I post, you can still see all of it. It's like the exact same situation. The difference here is that because I'm using Leo, I also earn Leo tokens, as you can see right here. So on top of the hive that I'm earning, I'm also earning Leo. So I'm basically doubling up my rewards. And that's why it's really important for you to patronize different uh, communities because you're going to earn more for doing so. Now there's a plethora of communities. Personally, I just like Leo finance. It's got a good value. Uh, it's very crypto focused. There might be some communities that are a little more focused on the things that you like, but I personally really like the way that Leo is set up and uh, the community strong. There's a lot of value behind the token. Once you kind of get through the steep learning curve and you figure out how everything works, uh, hopefully this video serves to achieve that, you'll be earning way more for having done so. So it's definitely worth the extra amount of effort. But again, everything is going to feel the same. You still have your wallet, you still have all the same stuff. The difference here is that this is your Leo tokens rather than your regular Hive wallet. You can still see your regular Hive wallet right here. Um, so this is what I have in Hive, and you would see the same thing if I were to access my wallet here on Peak D or on Hive.blog. Again, as you can see, it's the exact same situation. Um, this is my powered up Hive. So I've got quite a bit powered up, but most of it I've got delegated. And I'll get into that in a little bit because on top of the 3.45% that you earn for your powered up tokens, which you can see um, well, I guess because most of it's delegated right now, I'm not claiming rewards like I used to be, but before I was delegating, uh, you could see that I was claiming all these little rewards from my powered up hive, but because like 99% of my hive is now delegated instead, I'm doing these, uh, leases where other people are renting my hive power uh, for, so that they can do more with their hive. And then they're paying me every single day. So you can see these payouts of 1.367 hive every single day is coming to me from uh, having done that. So that is really, really great. And it's an easy way to just make a bunch of hive with uh, a much higher percentage APR than just the 3.45 um, because you get anywhere from like eight to like 13 when you lease it out. So we'll just really quickly go through that just to uh, get that out of the way. But there's a lot of different places that you can do this. There's a lot of different um, accounts that you can just delegate directly to and they'll pay you directly. But I use D lease and then I log in and then I go to market. And then essentially you can look at the APRs of what they're willing to pay you and what they want 
uh, to be lent. So say I had an extra 500 to lend out, they want it for two weeks, they're willing to pay 0.257 hive every day for two weeks in order to rent this from me, which will end up being 3.6 hive. Now, the more hive you've got to rent out, the more you can earn every day, and then it kind of just stacks up. So that's how I'm earning 1.367 hive per day, just because I'm delegating out to nine different leases. And if I was logged in, this would just say delegate, and then you could just type it in and delegate it. So that's how I'm earning a bunch of extra hive at a much faster rate. This is a great way to get passive income and... I've had a really good time with this and I highly recommend it. I'm earning way, way more Hive by doing it like this. So again, I know there's a lot to this, you guys. So, you know, stick with me. You could rewatch this video on YouTube. I'm going to have different sections. So you can jump between them. That's going to be a very easy to follow. But ideally, you would watch this on, you know, three speak on Hive or on library. All right, so I wanted to quickly cover undelegating as well as community creation because I kind of forgot both of those. So let's really quickly just jump back in and do those quick. So if you're on hive.blog, you can go to wallet and then the last tab here is communities. This is where you can just um, create your own community and it gets pretty in depth, but that is the general idea of creating this and setting this up. Then you actually log in and you manage that community. So, you know, obviously uh, you wouldn't show this to anyone, but um, I'm not worried about this test community here. So, um, and then if you're, if you go into the second tab here, you can see all your delegations and revoke them. Uh, I sometimes have trouble with this though. So I prefer just using peak D personally. You can obviously do whatever you want, but for peak D, I forgot to go into that. All my delegations here, when I click on what well, to delegate to someone, you can click delegate and then delegate. But um, to undelegate, you click on this little eyeglass or seeing eyeglass or what do you call them? a magnifying glass? You click on the magnifying glass, it'll open up all this. So then you can update or you can remove. And you'll actually notice that um, like 1001, your hive still earns uh 3.45% interest, or like wherever it's held. So I still get that. It's just it's getting interest on their delegations, but then when I take it back, it'll still have gained that 3.45% interest on top of the uh the stuff that i'm getting so that's how you maximize your apr because originally when i was talking about this i was like oh no where's my um where's my power coming in that i normally get but it's all delegated out so it's going to them currently in the delegation they're not getting it it's just i can't get it until i get the delegation back and you would just do that by by canceling this but that would obviously cancel the payments i'm getting so i'm not going to do that um, just to give you the example though, because I showed you earlier that Redbeard had earned a, a enough hive to be good on his own. He doesn't need this delegation from me anymore. So I can just remove that. And all you have to do is just, uh, confirm or you can update or whatever, and then confirm it on hive signer. And now this will take seven days for me to actually get that delegation back though it won't show up like it's see how it says it's expiring um and it'll take f in five days so i guess it's not seven days um my understanding was that what it, that's what it used to be but i guess it's it's just five days now um i guess that that might have changed and i just didn't really figure that out or notice that but yeah so five days to get that back and it just lets you know that it's expiring and then in five days i'll get that that 10 hive power back um, this obviously stays the same because it's all mine, but it'll just, this will be a little bit higher. It'll just be a uh, 38 instead of 48. So that is, um, that is delegations and undelegating. Just wanted to quickly add that update. So for the Leo tokens that we were talking about before, if we switch in our wallet, right, we switch to hive engine, this shows you all the different community tokens that you can earn from all the different uh, communities. So every time I get a payout from Leo, 
it ends up in here. And for any posts that you make on the blockchain, I'll go back to my posts here. It takes seven days for you to earn whatever you earn. And then you claim after seven days. And then beyond that, you cannot earn any more for that post. So it kind of encourages you to continually keep posting, uh, putting out content. Yes, there is the downside of like, you make a really good piece of content and it only earns you for seven days. And then it gets a ton of traction later on, but you're not going to earn for that. So Really, this is about promoting you to be consistently uploading content and getting those rewards for your consistent diligence. But as you can see here, it says payout will occur in six days. Um, so yeah, so I have to wait six days for that to actually work. And when you're using three speak, they do take 11% of your earnings um, because they are hosting videos, which costs them money to actually do. So because they are hosting this for you for free, they will take a percentage. Otherwise, all you can really do is just post um, directly on the platform. You can't actually post videos unless you're using some sort of uploader. DTube, which is completely separate now from Hive and Steam, now they, they have their own mainnet. But DTube is also another option because you can log in through Hive on DTube and you can post your content to DTube, Hive, and Steam. So that's pretty great as well. They will also still take a small cut, but um, you know, to each their own. If you just want to blog, you can do that on here without having to give anyone anything, and you just get the rewards curators, which are the people who actually upvoted this, you can see the amounts that they upvoted. So the actual values are right there. You can see like, for example, Leo gave me a 3.168 hive worth of an upvote. So, you know, it doesn't actually cost them anything. They're not donating anything to me, but it's based on their hive power is how much of an upvote they're able to give out to other people. And that's why people want to get more hive on top of, you know, being able to earn with it and all the other things that I mentioned previously, but that will all add up into how much rewards you'll actually get, but you won't get the full reward of all the 6.23. Um, first, I will be paying the 11% to three speak as well as a portion of the rewards actually go to the people who upvoted. Uh, so the curators. So those people get some of the rewards because, you know, they helped make this possible to actually get this value. And then a good portion, at least half, is going to then go to me. If I curated it, so I upvoted my own post before, uh, you know, like right after I posted, I'm the first curator. So I will earn more as well. Um, but because I don't have much of a hive upvote, I'm not going to earn a ton from curation, but I do that just to maximize my earnings. Being the first curator owner, the author of the post, I will get the most hive this way. So combining that with what I get from Leo is how I'm going to get the most amount of rewards. So I hope that makes sense. Kind of confusing. There's a lot to it. Um, so this is all the posts on my platform for everything that I've made. And then I can either go right into it and then look at the comments and respond to them. Or I can go here and look at replies. And then I can just respond and read the replies directly right here. Um, as we said at the beginning, when I was setting up the account, you can add all of your stuff in via the settings. And then this is what that will look like when you save that. Um, what else do we have to go through here? So we've covered the wallet. Let's actually talk about how to get the value from these tokens here. So this can be a little confusing, but essentially once you've earned, you know, a community based token, which is just like a second layer token. So like Leo, for example, you'll want to go to hive dash engine. You can log into this using your, uh, your keys or, you know, hive center or whatever. And then you go over to your wallet and this is what you'll see. So if I wanted to transfer my Leo into Hive, I would click on this button, which is how you go to the token market for it. And then if you're familiar with trading uh, anything, you know, in any type of cryptocurrency or stocks or whatever, it operates in a very similar way. I just scroll down here, I see my balance of Leo. And then this is what the highest bid is that people are paying for it. 
So I add both of those. It says I will get about 2.58 Hive. I hit sell. This will use your Hive Signer. So you do have to set up Hive Signer before this. Again, the way to set this up is essentially you just go in, you add your master key, and then you type in a password. And you do that by going into any Hive Signer or just hivesigner.com and you hit import account and then you'll go ahead and add your master key that we had originally and then you can set up a password. This is just a simple password that I use. So then you can log in that way and then this allows you to authorize transactions. It's a little confusing, but the reason that we need to do all of this is because this is about as decentralized as you can possibly get. You've got all these different levels of access. Um, every time you do something, you have to sign the transaction, quote unquote, by approving it, verifying it with your actual keys. Because again, everything that they're doing is to be very secure, very decentralized. It's all for your benefit. It is a little confusing, but I promise you all the effort will be worth it once you figure it all out. And then it becomes very straightforward as you get used to using this. So that should have gone through um, unless people weren't buying it at that, which then it would show up in your open orders and you can actually just cancel that and do it at a different value because it still has to be a reasonable value to actually be bought. But it, it did go through. So you can see now. Um, my swap.hive is essentially my hive tokens that I've got stored on hive engine. So this won't show up in my wallet just yet. So instead we want to click on, oh yes, yeah, so we want to click on that little drop down menu thing, and then you can send this, you can add to it from your regular account, or you can withdraw. There is a 1% fee. So, you know, do keep that in mind. Um, but anything that you're withdrawing from Hive Dash Engine is probably coming from Leo or some other community, which is obviously earned for free. So, you know, it's not really an issue. So then if I withdraw this, copy this value here, add it to the withdraw amount, I'm withdrawing it to my own account. Verify that again. Um, my password automatically updates because I have LastPass, but you would normally have to type in your password. Perfect. So that has been approved. Uh, we should see an update here pop up any moment. So you can see that went through so that when I go back to my wallet here, I'm not sure if this is updated yet, but 43 should update to 45 or at least 46 somewhere around there 45 yes so it went through no issues um it will appear here in a little bit it sometimes just takes a little bit for that to go through but yeah so that's how you transfer over any of your uh hive dash engine tokens onto hive again i know this is confusing but I'm trying to make it as simple as I possibly can. Um, so for these different things that you've got here in your wallet, Hive is your regular Hive tokens. Hive power is when you've staked it. One thing you do have to consider, and you see it says here, like this increases your voting, you get more curation rewards and more resource credits to be able to do you know, interactions, which is kind of like your bandwidth usage. And then you can delegate it to get more Hive or you can lend it to people, whatever you want to do. And then there's also being able to power down. So powering down is effectively getting your staked Hive back into liquid Hive. So if I powered all this down, all this would be here and then I could, you know, sell it, do whatever I want to do. Typically I use block trades to um, swap this out, but you can obviously, you know, withdraw this to any platform or exchange that uses Hive and you could sell it there, whatever you wanna do. The thing you have to consider though is power downs take 13 weeks to fully power down. So if I wanted, you know, 130 Hive to power down and then show up in my wallet, it will give me 1 13th of this every, a uh, week for 13 weeks. So after 13 weeks, I will finally have 
my 130 hive, but I will just be getting a 13th of that every week paid out to my wallet. So if I were to just do like say five, just as an example, sign the transaction with hive signer, you're, you're going to see that hive signer is where, is how you approve most transactions. That's what a lot of uh, platforms use. Because again, this isn't the main hive.blog platform. This is peakd.com. This is just some interface that was built on top of it. Um, and now you can see that it is powering down. It'll take seven days for the next power down of 0 0.385, 13 weeks in total. But we don't actually want to power down. So we're going to go ahead and cancel this. So that has been canceled. So again, um, to actually um, to actually set up Hive Signer, let's actually go over to HiveSigner.com just so that it's like completely clear to you guys and there's no confusions for when you want to actually use Hive Signer as well. Again, all you have to do is when you first get here, you import your account. So I have Scott C Business. And then I would add my master password or my private key that we originally got when we first started, I would hit continue and then it would give me the option to just create a password, but we've already done that. So all I have to do now is just type in my regular password, which I automatically enter via LastPass, and then I can just log in. No problems. Um, this just shows you the, the accounts that you've authorized on here. We have my test account that we just did and then my Scott C business account. So we're not going to worry about that. Back to peak D here. Um, there's also other things like you can buy these SBI units, which essentially is like you pay a certain amount of hive and then every post that you make, they're going to upvote your post. So essentially, if you plan to do a lot of content, investing in this is pretty useful because It'll just ensure that you keep getting upvotes and you'll be able to earn your money back over time. But if you're not posting a lot, this might not be useful for you. There's also, you know, in Hive Engine, you've got all the tokens that you'll earn on the different plat on the different uh, communities. And then there's also a lot of different things on here uh, for NFTs, games, all this different stuff. A very popular game is called Splinterlands. It is a card trading game. I've interviewed the founder about this before. He is also the creator of Hive Engine. Um, so, you know, a big shout out to him. Agrode Lighthacker is his username. And um, yeah, you can use all these different games and play and do all that stuff as well. And we won't get into that because that's a little too intricate and unnecessary for what most people are actually going to bother doing. As you can see here, everything that you do is shown to you. It's all logged in this in this long feed of all of your transactions. So you can see the swap that we did earlier. You can see the power down that I started, the power down that I stopped. There's also a lot of useful features in here. Um, you can see, you know, people who have followed you, notifications, payouts, activities. Um, there's also some other stuff here where you can actually vote for witnesses. Now, witnesses are sort of like the governance of the platform. These are people who are spending money to run nodes to keep the platform running. And you can vote for different witnesses who will then, you know, potentially work on different proposals. So you can see here. These are all these different proposals that people can uh, propose. And if they get supported, they will be worked on. Um, also, you know, different witnesses have different, they have a few different things that they could do. They can change like the interest rates of a uh, hive back dollars versus regular hive. Um, let's actually quickly go back and take a look at that because I didn't explain this yet. Essentially, hive is the regular token that you'll be using, whereas hive to back hive back dollars is the pegged to the US dollar. So you can see here it's, it's usually generally pegged, but essentially what they do to ensure that this stays pegged is if it's over a dollar, you will get hive backed uh, dollar rewards for your posts until the inflation has brought it down to a dollar. And when you've only got uh, when this is under a dollar, they will not give out any rewards in Hiveback dollars. 
um, so that there is no inflation whatsoever so that this can stabilize and you will only earn regular hive. You can easily switch between the two. No issues there. Like say I just want my hive and I want to power up. I would sell this. So you can see there's a pretty good arbitrage too. So it doesn't hurt to sell this. It's probably going to be worth like five hive. So you saw how I clicked the drop down arrow and went to market. This is just trading between hive back dollars and hive. So when I want to actually sell my hive back dollars here, let me just log into my regular account here. All right, so when I go back to market, now we have the correct values, perfect. So I always just trade whatever the lowest ask is. You can get into trying to trade at specific prices, et cetera, et cetera, but I don't really bother with all that. I just trade at whatever is available. So I click on available and I click on lowest ask and it populates this for me. So I'm going to get 4.817 high for my six, a 0.634 hive back dollars. And then if I wanted to go from hive to um, hive back dollars, you can see here what that would look like. If I, I my 50 hive could buy 6.587 hive back dollars. So if I wanted to do that, I could do that the other way. And uh, if your order doesn't go through immediately because you know, you didn't get the best order or whatever, it'll appear in open orders and then you could cancel it or do whatever. But this went through, so if we go back, you should see that this will be ever so slightly higher, like 49 or 50 even. Perfect. So now that's at 50. This is the process that I generally use. Um, it might be good for you to hold on to your Leo or your high back dollars or whatever you want to do. But for me, I usually just transfer everything into Hive and then I power up and then I delegate that out on Dlease IO, which I mentioned earlier so that I can just increase my passive income earnings. This is the estimated value. Um, this is the current value as uh, provided by CoinGecko. So this all just kind of gives, keeps you up to date, up to speed. Hive savings. The reason that you ever might want to use Hive savings is you can transfer your funds into your savings account. Thing is though, it doesn't actually like save you money. There's no interest like you would get with Hive Power. Really, the point of this is for security. So if you had a ton of Hive on your account and you put it all on your savings, it takes three days to withdraw from your savings. So the reason is that if you had some money in your savings and you know what, we'll just do a quick, um, a quick test. So I'll just use one here. Sign this on Hive Signer. Approve. Perfect. So you can see I've got one hive in my savings. You can also put hive back dollars in your savings. And the reason that you would do this is for security. So if you had a lot of hive, uh, especially in your liquid form, and you wanted to be as secure as possible, you would put it in your savings so that if someone somehow hacked your account or, you know, you left this open one day or whatever, Someone couldn't just come in and just steal all of your hive just like instantly. They would instead have to go withdraw it and it would take three days, 72 hours to actually get that out before they can actually start spending it and using it. So the reason that that is so useful is because then you come on your account and you can see that there is a transfer in progress. Um, right here so you can see that a transfer is happening and if you didn't make that transfer you know that your account has been compromised thus you can go and you can change your password to prevent someone from then getting access to all your funds because again if they were going to try to steal your staked hive it would take them 13 weeks to get all of it um, and you would see that as well in the power down so if there's any suspicious activity you would generally be able to tell that it's going on and then you could just change your password. Um, so that should help you avoid any issues there. Or again, if you just have your account open and someone just comes up to your computer and starts trying to steal from you um, just from a physical, you know, access to your account. Sorry about that. Hopefully that kind of breaks all that down. I know that's a lot and I kind of jumped all over the place. I didn't really have like an outline for this. I didn't have like 
you know, something that I was working through. I just kind of wanted to go through and share everything with you guys. So I do also want to take a quick look at actually posting content and what you have to keep in mind. And then uh, really quickly, just looking at the general feed and interacting with other people. So if you were going to post a video, you would go to three speak and you'd upload your video and everything. But for now, we're just going to take a look at a quick blog post. So if you click on this little pencil here and you create a post, you can also um, set up a template or do a draft post and then save it. You can also schedule your posts. So there's a ton of things that you can do, but essentially um, this is where you'll actually write your post test. You can, you can start by putting a little image here. Uh, the image will be what people will actually see in the feed. So you probably want to include an image. So for example, if I was like recreating my last post, but um, it was a video, but let's just pretend like this wasn't. I just dragged a uh, image in here and this uploads. So it's being hosted on Peak D. Um, regardless of where you actually use it, or like even if you upload the image to Imgur or whatever it happens to be, you can post that link in here and host it like that. Or you can just click on this image thing and then upload. There's many different ways to achieve the different things you might be trying to do. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now you can go and you can make your blog and you know, and you can add all of your your headers and you know, all the different things that you would do for blogging. Um, if you know HTML markdown, that's what you're actually coding all of this in. So headers are determined by um, these little hashtags. Um, but again, you can just use this to avoid having to worry about, you know, needing to understand that. Like, for example, I believe bold is asterisks, double asterisks around. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different things, but it, it'll, it'll function just like a regular blog, right? Like if you wanted to do an itemized list, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you can just see the preview here. Um, so, you know, that's pretty much all you need to know. And you can write whatever you want to write. Do not spam because people can downvote your post and um, people can upvote your post. If people upvote your post, they will be giving you free earnings. But if they downvote your post, they'll take away from the earnings that you would have otherwise got. So if you just post like terrible posts, you're probably not going to earn anything. So keep that in mind. Then you can write a short description about your post and then you can add um, up to 10 topics for the regular hive. And for like three speak, you can only add five topics slash tags, quote unquote. Um, but for uh, peak D, they allow you to do up to 10. And essentially, it's just sort of like it's a tag that represents where people will find this content. So you can see crypto has been added. And when you're typing them in, you just uh, hit enter to actually lock them in. So this would appear in the crypto section. So if we actually go back and take a look at my account, we can see how these posts actually look. So again, this is a three speak post, but you could still edit this uh, from here in the same way. You wouldn't have to only do it through three speak because people can still view this anywhere as we are right now on peak D. And um, so these are the tags that I used. So if you click on these tags, you can see all the different content in these tags. So all the different people who have been posting, um, this is based on upvotes. So right now it's filtered by the top posts. You can go here and you can change that. You can look at uh, recently, uh, you know, posted posts, you can see trending, um, promoted posts just based on uh, timeline. So recent, and uh, you can mute people who you don't want to see content from. But if you did want to see their muted uh, content at some point, just because you wanted to check it out, you can also view that as well. So we're going to switch it to recent. This is just showing everything with no filters. Anyone who is tagged crypto will appear here. Um, and there's no real order. So you can see these people don't really have any rewards because they just posted 13 minutes ago. They only have a few likes. So if I wanted to like their post, you can only do a certain amount of likes per day based on your hive power and it'll deplete and then it'll recharge over time. 
Um, but because most of my hive power is delegated away, it's not really like mine to spend until I get it back, which I can always get it back at any time, but it takes seven days to undelegate. So essentially, um, I can give like barely anything, but I mean, Hey, an upvote's an upvote, right? You do want to really upvote just like good quality content, but of course you can do whatever you want to do up in the top right corner is the actual community that it's been posted in. You can see some of the popular communities. And again, the communities themselves are the second layer solutions where you can earn those community specific tokens um, from those communities. Not every community has their own token, um, but they will be highlighted within that community, right? So to my knowledge, three speak doesn't have a token but you'll be able to see all of the three speak uh, posts from the three speak community. So if you post a three speak, then everyone looking at this community will see your posts and it's filtered uh, in that way. So you can see there are uh, just under 2000 users who are actively subscribed to this community. It's not as popular as say like Leo finance because in the Leo finance community, you're able to earn a lot of rewards right? So, and then they can also highlight posts and, and pin them and feature them and all this different stuff. The community feature is really just like the extra thing that you're adding on. Uh, when we were originally making our, our post, if we go back to create a post here, um, you can see there is no community section, but, um, when you open advanced, you can see everything else that you can add. Again, there is no community section. So to actually use various communities, you have to post within those communities. So here's an example, right? If I go to DTube and then I write a post specifically in the DTube community, you can see right here now it is posting to DTube. Also include in my blog. So you can say if you want this to actually include on your channel or just on this community, um, and this is where you can actually change that. I didn't realize that there was a little drop down here and you could just decide based on this. So this would just post it to your blog and then this would post it to that community. And then you can decide if you want to post it to both. It makes sense to obviously post it to both, not just that community, but if you wanted to do something just for that community and not necessarily for all of your audience, you don't have to post to your audience. You could just post to that community, but it makes sense to probably just post it to everyone. Now we'll quickly look at three speak or sorry, it's three speak dot online. And again, this is a interface built upon steam. This is still the same account, same login, same wallet. Everything that happens here is still happening on the other platform. Again, I know a lot of this can be very confusing, but it starts to make sense once you've you know, kind of mess around with the platform a little bit and gotten used to it. So when you go to upload video, it's pretty similar to how you would do something on like YouTube. Um, it gives you kind of like your studio here. And then I go to actually upload and then you can drop a file in here up to 3.5 gigs. It helps to just compress your videos. I use hand break to do that. Um, because usually I could, I could have something even like an hour long and that'll be like five gigs and I have to compress that down to be able to make it work. But then once you upload that, you could add your title, description, your tags. As we mentioned, you get five tags, the, uh, the language, then the community, which again, um, this is where you'll be able to post directly to a community to either benefit from being featured in that community, or you post to a community that has their own token so that you can earn that token on top of what you're earning. And again, I highly, highly recommend Leo finance because Leo finance has basically doubled, if not more than doubled my income from hive, which is significant. And then you can choose, uh, the payout. Um, normally it'll give you 50% of just regular hive and then 50% of hive power, but you can also just do a hundred percent into hive power depends what you want to do. Um, because if you want to be able to actually sell some every now and then and get some money out, 
you know, you might want some liquid funds, but if you're really just focused on building your passive income over a long period of time, you might just want to go 100% into the power up. But either way, when you get your funds, you can just power up right away. There's no detriment to just doing that. And then you can upload your thumbnail, etc. And then you can schedule it to go at a, at a later date or just publish it as is. And then it'll take some time to encode. And then eventually it will publish and you'll see it on your account, whether you're looking at it on three speak or you're looking at it on here, it will pop up because this is from three speak and then it's on Leo finance. So this is how I'm able to kind of, you know, utilize the regular hive interface, utilize Leo finance and utilize three speak all in one. So I'm getting decentralized video. I'm using a decentralized platform and then a second layer solution to maximize my earnings, my reach, and just getting the best possible experience for me and other users on the platform. All of the posts I've ever made are also filtered right here. So you can check them all out. Um, this is just a good way to be able to see the different posts that you've made and, and what tags you've used. You don't want to post on tags that aren't used, right? So I've posted to interview, but interview is barely used. Um, and we know this because if I go and look, um, so this is trending, right? Now, I mean, it's not barely used, right? Because like a day ago, people were posting and it is used, but you've always just want to consider like, do I want to reach the most people or do I want to go into a more niche tag because you'll be more likely to be seen and then potentially get more upvotes. So you might want to do a mix of like really popular tags and then less popular tags so that as you do better with the less popular tags, you'll get seen on the more popular tags. It's kind of similar for um, SEO on like YouTube and how you would do things there. But here you have way less tags to use. So you know, that's just something to keep in mind. I would recommend just kind of being uh, general using tags that you know are actually being used versus, you know, spending a bunch of time researching. But I mean, you can get as in depth as you want to get. That's a general overview of the platform. Um, you can follow different tags, different communities, all that good stuff. And then if you want to just go onto the main feed of the platform, it'll just show you people who you're following. And uh, yeah, if you want to send Hive to other people, you know, if you want to send them um, to your friends, whatever, my buddy Redbeard is on the uh, is on Hive now. So, you know, I'm going to send him one Hive here and you can even attach a little message. This was in my explainer video. Feel free to go and give him a uh, a follow as well. So yes, I'm sending him some well, one hive, uh, but you can see here that that is his account. So I know that it's going to the correct person. And then if I looked at his wallet, I would know that um, this will arrive momentarily once once I approve this. So everyone's account is 100% through and through public. Anyone can see anything you've ever done, anything you've ever sent, anything you've ever posted, everything. It's all 100% public. That's why I'm showing you here that uh, I can see his account. It's not like a violation of privacy because everyone can see his account. But you can see now he has one hive in his wallet that I sent him. I also delegated him some hives. So he's got plus 10 here delegated to him to... Uh, be able to get started in the platform. He's continued to power up though. So now he's good. He doesn't need my delegation. Um, and he's got about 73 cents worth of hive. So you really can start from nothing and just build your way up. That's kind of the beauty of hive, even know that it's more beneficial if you do invest, um, because you can kind of speed up the process a little bit. So, you know, for some people, they want to invest more. Some people want to just, you know, hundred percent free. And then if we're going to look at like how to actually like trade this out, if you go on to a platform that actually allows you to trade Hive, uh, I'm not sure if Binance does, I think they do, but let's just assume Binance or like Poloniex or whatever. If you go on there, you hit deposit, they'll give you an address to send to like deep crypto dash eight, and then a memo that you have to type in. So, you know, say I was sending it to that address. And then you have to include the memo, the exact memo that they've um, added 
Because they even say here, like they're warning you, like make sure you type in the exact memo because you're sending this to an exchange. You have to type in the exact memo. Otherwise, they won't know which account to send it to. And there's usually no refunds. So with most things crypto related, you always have to be very specific about what you're doing, where you're sending, all that stuff. So just be very, very um, you know, cautious when you're sending these kinds of things. I like using something like block trades which is a swap service that allows you to um, trade out your hive to many, many different types of, uh, of currencies. And if you go over the limit, uh, they would ask that you create an account and KYC, but you can trade quite a bit without having to actually KYC. So say I wanted to just you know sell off 50 hive and just get a little bit of my Ethereum. I can, I can very easily do that. Um, well, I'm not going to bother logging in, but I would just get my Ethereum address. I would put it right here. Actually, you know what? Let's just do it just for the sake of, okay. So got my Ethereum address, put it into the Ethereum address here, get the deposit address. If you wanted to manually do this, this is what I was mention mentioning earlier. I would send the Ethereum or the, the hive that I want to trade to block trades or I would, uh, oh, sorry. I would send it to block trades and I would add this as the memo. So if we were going to do that, I would go block trades, grab the memo, put it in here and then trade whatever I was going to trade. Right. Um, I'm not actually doing 50 obviously because I can't. I don't know if that actually matters. Like if you actually have to send the exact amount, it really shouldn't matter. But just to be safe, I want to actually fully go through with this so you guys can get an example of, of how this works. So we got a new deposit address um, because I updated this. I'm pretty sure this is the same anyways. But so you would use that or you go through Hive Signer. So this is what I normally do because this is a little more simplified, I guess I would say. So we're going to do 45. I'm going to get it in Ethereum to my Ethereum address. There's a lot of different things that you could trade if you wanted to, but I'm going to use a uh, hive signer to do this. So right here, log in, authorize or approve rather. and we're good to go. So if I refresh this, it should show up in my pending transactions, I believe. Ah, so there we go. Um, it only actually took like maybe two minutes tops. Um, it didn't even show up in pending. It just went right away. So very, very fast, very easy to do. I think pending normally shows up if you're doing something that takes longer, like Bitcoin or whatever it happens to be. Um, but yeah, so it went through, gives you the output hash, all that great stuff. And we should see my Ethereum like update. Oh yeah, you saw that kind of quickly pop up there and update. And there you go. That was what I got. It was $5.90 Canadian worth of Ethereum from my hive. So you could see that this is about as decentralized as you could possibly get. There's no one who's going to help you though. There's no support. There's no recovery. Everything is on you. But at the same time, there's no one to stop you. There's no one to approve anything you're doing. There's no KYC. There's no verification at all. This is about as decentralized as it gets you guys. Library is also extremely decentralized. Um, but obviously we've been talking about Hive today. So that's why I've been going through all of this. I think that covers almost everything. Um, actually, we'll also quickly take a look at Hive blocks. So this is a little more technical, but if you go to hiveblocks.com and then slash at your username, it's kind of going to give you a, a breakdown of all the things that you've done very in depth. So everything that you do from upvotes to sending hive to anything that you do, it's all here. Anyone can see that by the way, as well. You've also got a reputation that goes up every time you get upvoted. And the more of an upvote you get, the more your reputation goes up. It's just a way to kind of show people that, um, you've been doing good work and you're not like a spam account because if you get downvoted enough, I believe you start at 25 
and then you go down if you get downvoted. And then once you're below a certain threshold, your posts are hidden from the main feed because you're like a spammer or whatever. Um, but you're not censored, so to speak, in that people can't find your content. It's just not shown to the main feed is my understanding. And you can always get out of that or create a new account or whatever it happens to be. So my account was created January 2018. Uh, you can see what I was mentioning before with resource credits. So I've only got about 69 hive power that is just like usable uh, by me at any time because everything else is delegated. So that's why my upvote is so low when we were looking at that before. But I've got my resource credits. So every time I do an action, as I have been, it uses a little bit of this. And you can see it's at 99% rather than 100. But then it'll slowly go back up to 100 over time. Same with my voting power here. So like I can only give out a certain amount of votes before it drains down and then I have to wait to recharge. The whole point of this is to prevent people from spamming. And if you want to do a lot more, you have to stake more in the system to be able to do more. So it kind of makes you like, if you want to be a spammer and, you know, ruin the blockchain, you've got to put a bunch of money in to be able to achieve that. So by having skin in the game, they kind of deter people from, you know, doing things that are going to negatively affect everyone else. I did mention at the very beginning witnesses, um, and that you should vote for witnesses. If you don't really understand how any of this works, the easiest thing you can do is just delegate your, uh, your, or rather proxy your vote to someone else who does know what they're doing. I don't even keep up with the votes very much because it's just, you know, not something I'm, I'm, I have the time to keep up with. So I delegate my vote or, um, last time I checked, I was delegating my vote. Yeah. So you can see here, I delegated my vote to, they call me Dan, who was actually the creator of three speak, who I've also done an interview with in the past. And then whoever he votes for is who I'm voting for, but you can do the votes yourself. Of course. Um, everyone's got, you know, different things that they, that they're, you know, working towards. They've got different projects that you can support. Um, they all have slightly different, prices that they have on, um, you know, like the feed and how much interest they want to charge on SBD and all these different complicated things. It gets very, very complicated when you start to really get into uh, hive. There's so much to it. And I apologize if I've ever said steam at any point in this, because this was originally steam. And then when Justin's son ruined steam by hostile with his hostile takeover by buying steam it and then using all the funds from the ninja mine, that's a whole other story. You can, you can see a video that I've done on that in the past, but this is the new version of steam, so to speak. And, um, yeah, hive is really awesome. I've had a great time using it. I've earned a lot using it. Um, lots of support, lots of people following me. It's just a really good experience all around. And I know that this was so freaking long. Um, but I hope that you got a lot of value out of this. This was, this took way too long to do. So I really hope that you appreciate this. Give it a like, uh, upvote this on Steam and all that good stuff. This explains so many different things that I could have probably done in different videos, but I wanted to have just one like super mega explainer. Again, I probably could have done this with like an outline, but um, hopefully this will serve as like an all encompassing kind of guide for the main things you need to worry about. Of course, there are other caveats to the platform. If you have any questions, of course, leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to get to them. But for the most part, for everything that we've covered, I've basically gone through everything. Again, some of the main points are just that Steam is the underlying network and there's all these different platforms that exist on Steam, but it's all the same platform. It's the same login. It's the same amount of upvotes. It's the same wallet. It's the same posts. There's just different interfaces for the way that things look, different UIs and um, different ones have different filters. So three speak only shows three speak videos, uh, peak D and hive.blog show you everything. There's certain platforms that filter out certain things. So, you know, you'll get a, a little bit of a different experience on all of them, but for the most part, it's all generally the same thing. Again, I know it's very confusing. Um, and as well as all those different keys that we talked about in the very beginning, as long as you've got those, 
um, and you and you know what they are and you've got them saved, you're pretty much good to go. For the most part, you don't want to use your master key to log into anything because that's not very secure. The whole point of having all those different tiers of keys is just so that when you're accessing these different platforms, that you're only giving them access to what they need access to and nothing more than that. If you just use Hive Signer, um, that kind of simplifies a lot of this. And then you're just using a regular password versus like these private keys, which I know can get a little confusing for some people. So if you want to simplify this whole process, just use hivesigner.com uh, to sign everything. And you're going to need it for a lot of different things like Hive Engine anyways. Um, and again, Hive Engine is the sort of token network for all these different tokens that have been created on top of Hive. So Hive is the base layer and you've got all these little tokens created on top of it that can then be sold and transferred back into Hive or you can transfer from Hive into those tokens as well. So this is my comprehensive breakdown of all these platforms and the Hive network. I hope that this explains everything. Again, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments. Please, please share this with other people, subscribe, upvote, all that good stuff, because uh, it really helps make this all worth it and all this time and effort. I'm probably gonna have to write a million different things uh, in the explanation of this as well, just to make sure that everything's fleshed out and uh, you have a full understanding. But again, thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Cheers.